Uh, my name is Paul, Paul LeBay. I'm the director of Death Guard. The story is about a group of lifeguards, and one of the lifeguards discovers that there is a serial killer on the loose. Nobody believes him, so he goes about trying to solve the mystery. And in the story, he finds clues that it's his fellow lifeguard. Maybe there was no killer. Not another conspiracy theory killer. I'm a pretty good fan of like uh, slasher, old school slasher films. So um, just to know that it's a slasher film, well, it's an, it's basically the, it's a lifeguard, but like the complete opposite. <laughs> and so uh, Death Guard, and I just thought that was hilarious. Like a little kid in like. <laughs> Like, hey, can you say your lines and then you point at the television up there? Yeah, we're going to see You'll see the television. And then I'll make those rest of line references and then yeah. I'll go back and forth. Yeah. The whole time I'm kind of standing there talking to him, looking down on him, whatever, and getting him. The story, I like it because it's tongue in cheek. It's a, uh, it's kind of a suspense thriller kind of thing, but it's also got a little bit of a comedic element, but very subtle. That's what I like about it. And then we cut to um, a face, a close up of a face, maybe from here up and we'll put makeup on the face and make it look like it's dead. And then as someone's zipping it up, and as they go up, we flash different faces, maybe four or five different faces as the zipper goes up. It's the same zipper, but the faces change. So you, we, we, we show that there's at least four victims in about five seconds, like just quick. And then when the zipper goes all the way up, we hear that sound and then we... I'm Warren Fast, I'm playing Gus. I'm Tony Saiz. I'm Ralph Gill. My name is Eric Soto, and I'm be playing Charlie. My name is Sarah Nunez. Hi, my name is Andrea Magre. I'm playing Stephanie. Uh, my name is Justin Oppenheimer. Most people know me as Opie. Hi, I'm Monica Lynn Herrera. I'm the captain of the lifeguard force. I'm playing the character of Star, the super new age hippie, super fun role, super great script, and I'm really happy to be here, so check it out. Yeah. Uh, Inga, I don't think he's going to come. Okay. So, so, we're doing is me and the police talking? Yeah, scene two. The, yeah. The police talking to scene two, yeah. Yeah, the, she was lying there like a yeah. dead dolphin. Yeah, right. exactly. And the girl that we had play it, she might not be here, so we'll just have yeah, someone under a sheet, a figure under a sheet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, I need to use <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good stuff. Get ready, get ready. It's not important that we, we see much of Chris. All that's important is that we know that there's somebody there looking at the body. And we wonder, who is this person? Because this is the first time in the movie that we see this person. All right, got it. It's more important that we see the body and the, and the water in the background. Right. My character is uh, kind of whacked out. He's a conspiracy theorist. He's always uh, thinking that any, any dead body that's found that there's some kind of some killer behind it. There's uh, some a murderer. Uh, I don't know, just something, some behind it. He doesn't really trust that it could just be a drowning. Like, kind of start like looking at her, like, no, well, maybe we're just doing our jobs better. Like, okay, don't, don't I like that. Me. I like that. So he's kind of trying to figure out who the Death Guard is, who he labels the Death Guard, um, because you know, people are kind of laughing it off, but he really thinks that there's someone out there. So his role is just to kind of figure out while well, everybody's kind of giving him a hard time about it. The death guard, <laughs> really, how sexy. But babe, Dirk, I really think you're fishing for the Loch Ness Monster. Look, this guy really exists. The female lead, Raquel, and she starts off as the girlfriend of one of the other lifeguards who's the rival of the main character. I know, you think lifeguards would prevent this, huh? You don't think I'll try? She is a selfish, sassy girl that does not care about anybody but, but herself. And she thinks she could always get away with anything and that she can always get anything she wants to. Her boyfriend is Charlie. He is the quintessential perfect lifeguard. He can do no wrong. Oh, Paul's great. Um, I, I work with him in acting. I've done some acting uh, uh, techniques with him, so it's, uh, it's really fun to actually be working with him in an environment that he's familiar with. So. He is painted as a possible killer, as the Death Guard. 
So we are staying with this setup. This is uh, C21. C21. Okay. Hey, Paul, is that the owner? No. But we wouldn't want to put the light on them for the for the noir look that yeah. Paul, Paul the wants. The only thing that I'm going to tell you guys, if you guys are using this camera, that like you might have reflection uh, from this uh, door right here. From the door? Yeah. Nelson Cairo, who is the director of photography, um, great job. The, the guy got dirty in the sand, did whatever I asked him to do, and he did it. And because he did it, we have some phenomenal dynamic shots. Well, the responsibilities for the director of photography is supposed to look at the cameras, you know, try to figure out what are the best shots for the scenes that you're trying to get, make sure the lighting is correct. You want to make sure what the director wants, you have to put it out there using the cameras. Okay, we're going to shoot this as an establishing, and then we're going to get a tighter shot on Big John. Okay? We, we knew the shot that we were looking for, we set it up, we took it, and we got it over like in two, two three takes. We also have Denise Alvarez, who is our production designer. Um, was always there, always asking me questions. You know how the sandbar uh, had like everything lifeguard theme? Mm -hmm. So this one? Does it? Exactly, so we have to work on it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter. There could be an atmosphere. If not, we just cut them out of the scene if they don't get here on time. But in the meantime, we could get Gus behind the bar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we could do something. Yeah, we're missing one of the main actors who yeah. we need for, oh, for this, the, the scene that we wanted to shoot. And she did a great job with developing the props and the set design. What I've gained on this shoot is a lot. What I didn't like about being a producer before was the fact that it just didn't seem creative or artistic. It's just about doing paperwork and organizing. However, I found out that organizing can be creative and artistic as well. We honestly thought that it was not going to get picked. And we were actually surprised that it got picked. We were like, they are not going to produce a movie that's dark as this, a black comedy, and a movie that's going to be shot on the beach with people drowning in the water in fight scenes. Cut! Was there any boom? Was there any boom? No. Okay, go back to the Because that was good. I just said, hold my breath there, hold my breath. But it's dangerous, and I think that's why they chose it. Okay. Okay, so what you're gonna do, you're gonna do some cost, you're gonna do some and you're gonna look up at him. Okay. And then you'll be right off camera. Okay. We filmed underwater. Very few films, student films, film underwater. We have an underwater death scene. Death Guard, coming to a theater near you.